What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward. You know, and getting back to the to the forty-four million dollar deal, you signed the four forty-four, and I think what most people don't understand is, is at that time that was the going rate. You signed that deal. Ty Lawson signed that deal, and give or take two, three, two, four yeah. million dollars each way. Um, DeMar Drew. DeRozan signed the same deal. Drew Holiday signed the same deal. Uh, I think I, I should. I think I said Ty Lawson mm -hmm. already. Brandon Jennings signed the same. Like everyone was kind of signing that same deal. Now, a year later, it was the worst deal in pro <laughs> sports history. <laughs> One year later was the absolute worst deal in professional sports. On your behalf. On the Warriors' behalf, yeah, the is. best deal. Yeah, but absolutely. How did you go through that, knowing you're making eleven million dollars a year? You probably should be. You should be making twenty five million dollars a year. But in the same token, if you don't sign the forty four million dollar deal, um, the Warriors have to decide on whether they're going to keep me or Clay. Mm -hmm. um, the Warriors are never able to sign Andre. Mm -hmm. um, and then in hindsight, fast forward a couple more years KD. later, also not able to sign KD as well. So how were you able to go through that and see the bigger picture and know, I'm going to ultimately make my money. But right now, I mean, there was a time where I, I think, yeah, there was a time where I was making more money than you. on Like you were the fifth or sixth highest paid player on our team. It's a, it's a all intentionality. And it's, it sounds so freaking cheesy and cliche because I'm talking about it right now. But, like, this is exactly how I thought. And it's like I talked to my wife about it right before I signed. I was flying into Phoenix the day before opening uh, open the night, which, by the way, was probably one of the worst games signing after signing a contract <laughs> <laughs> in NBA history, too. We were on the road to open up in Phoenix. And uh, at the time, Larry Riley, uh, Bob was there. Um, my agent and they're like we're trying to figure out coming to a deal and like it was that one thing I had to just tell myself like one let's let's look let's keep perspective here like 44 million dollars over four years more money than my pops ever made in the league because I had been around the league for 16 years watching my dad play like I know how league that how far the league has grown grown from when he played and like that's good money support my family I got a lot of security I just want to be healthy. Like, let's just focus on that, not what you leaving on the table, what you could have made, and then don't count anybody else's money. Like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you sign, like, that's your decision. You're going to rock with it. You hopefully have a lot more years to play this game. Um, and I try to set that foundation for my mindset right then and there and never, ne re like, negotiate with myself afterwards. Never, like, second guess, never come back to that moment like, oh, I should have, could have, would have, because that's not how life works. So I had to be really intentional about it. I, I hate, like, that's it sounds so simple and, and fairy tale because it did work out, but I do give myself credit that that was the perspective that I made sure I had and didn't want to let anything distract me from what, you know, could have been or what I left on the table, uh, what other situation that could have been out there. And and thankfully, you know, like you said, you listed off five things that were kind of you know, consequences of that. Mm -hmm. And I was still taken care of. I was still good. Mm -hmm. So that meant a lot in that moment. Did, <clears throat> did signing a $44 million deal, which like you said, is a lot of money, but then ultimately you realize like, I'm not even making half of what I should. Did that play any role into you ultimately leaving Nike and saying, I'm going to go sign with Under Armour? That is a great question. And yes, that is actually a fantastic. Nobody's ever really put that two and two together. It was an opportunity to, I guess there's always that, that, that theme in the league when somebody's coming up with a contract extension or free agency or whatever, like, do you bet on yourself? Like, what does that do you bet on yourself? What does that mean, right? Everybody is, uh, you know, like a Nerlens Noel type situation. You know, you have somebody like uh, DeAndre Ayton right now. You got yeah. guys that had good money on the table. Mm -hmm. How it works out, we'll see, right? With that piece, like knowing I had, you know, four years on the court and got to survey the free, shoe free agency situation and just see where I was at. On that side of the, the uh, or on, in that part of uh, my career, like building something from scratch, 
taking a, sh a chance to um, put my fingerprint on a brand um, from from the ground up and 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 have a company that was going to kind of invest behind me that was a huge opportunity and it was kind of going against the grain a little bit in terms of at that time the stable that that Nike had and uh, you know everybody can talk about oh they do it the best and this and that that's you know you know, matter of opinion, but the fact that I got to go and, you know, get in the signature shoe game, build a brand, be able to inspire and storytell uh, around things that are important to me, like, we're now eight, what, nine years removed yeah. from that? Yeah. <laughs> and I got this freaking logo <laughs> on my hat and we have hopefully something that will continue to be part of the legacy for years and years and years and years to come. That was me betting on myself. Um, and it was... Uh, it, it was a fun, it's been a fun process uh, from day one. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I would have made that decision had, you know, things gone differently uh, with the contracts, though.